have good reasons to believe North Fen leaders are playing games with Nigeria. Joe Iwokwe, Frobak. Welcome to the news and thank you for tuning in to listen. It is Thursday and news break travels back in time to February 2012 when the current special advisor to Lagos State Governor Babajide Songwulu on drainage and water resources, Joe Ibokwe, via an opinion piece, said that Nigerian leaders, especially the ones from the north, are playing games with the country. Many would argue that Ibokwe would not publicly take a, such a position today again. At the time, Ibokwe tied the coming of the Boko Haram terrorist group to the emergence of former President Gola Jonathan as Nigeria's leader. According to him, if General Buhari had won the election, the murderers would not have raised even a finger. Newi Anambra born Joe Ibukwe is today a chieftain of the ruling All Progressive Congress APC in Lagos today. For long, he has been a writer, pro democracy activist, political analyst, policy analyst, author, widely read, and public commentator. Among his published works are Ebo's 25 Years After Biafra, published in 1995, Heroes of Democracy, published in 1999, and co-authored in 2007, The IBB Option in 2004, with his friend Peter Claver Opara. Ibokwe joined the Lagos State Government in 2006 as the pioneer general manager of the Lagos State Infrastructure Maintenance and Regulatory Agency, LASIMIRA, L-A-S-I-M. RA and served there for more than 10 years. In 2015, he was appointed as the first chairman of Wharf London Fees Collecting Authority, WLFCA in a proper seven till his appointment as a member of a cabinet of Songwulu. Ibokwe had been the publicity secretary of a state chapter of the defunct Action Congress AC, which later fused into the Action Congress of Nigeria ACN and metamorphosed into the All Progressive Congress since 2007 and has been the pioneer chairman of the Conference of the All Progressive Congress Publicity Secretaries across Nigeria since 2014. War is imminent in Nigeria, but God forbid. We read Ubukwe's opinion piece. He wrote, I have been compelled to write once again as Joe Ibukwe, and as usual, I speak strictly for myself. My philosophy of service to humanity has pushed me again to speak the truth to power in Nigeria due to repeated primitive, senseless, and ejective threats and attacks to the sovereignty of Nigeria by the Boko Haram sucked in northern Nigeria. I am writing once again as a concerned Nigerian who wants to who wants Nigeria to be preserved and consolidated simply because I feel we are better united. Yes, I want Nigeria to remain as a political entity, but it must be based on social aid, social justice, respect for human lives, freedom, liberty, equity, and rule of law. Few days ago, Igbo Nation buried 12 breadwinners and a mother in Adazonu Kwanambra State, brutally murdered by Boko Haram sect in Mubi, Adamawa State. What many thought was a rumor turned out to be a stark reality that swept every sensible person in Anambra State, Igbo Nation, and Nigeria off their feet. When I saw that, they provoked the man in me, and I nearly lost my senses. Boko Haram is slaughtering those innocent men and women, seems to be telling Igbo Nation and Nigeria to do their worst. But Igbos have restrained themselves, believing that there are still leaders in the north who can stand up to be counted. Yes, two wrongs can never make a right. But tell me, is civility a sign of weakness? In actions and deeds, Boko Haram is gradually and systematically dividing Nigeria, and what the Arab Consultative Forum, ACF, could tell Nigeria is that no force will stop Boko Haram, meaning that Boko Haram is now a parallel government in Nigeria. Boko Haram is now a parallel government that has almost sent all the indigenous of southern Nigeria away from the north to their homestead. Boko Haram has now become too powerful to challenge the Nigerian police, the trusted army of Nigeria, the Air Force and the Navy. Boko Haram is now a powerful parallel government that has successfully attacked the world at the United Nations headquarters in Abuja and dead the world to fight. Boko Haram has successfully sent packing all the youth coppers from southern Nigeria, seven in the north, and that they are being deployed to southern states as I write this. My sibling, Mr. Innocent Ibukwe, a lawyer who is supposed to serve in Gombe State, is now in a state. 
Boko Haram has successfully driven Bonafide citizens of this country to Cameroon and other African countries to seek protection. When Boko Haram seizes now, Nigeria cut is cold. Now, I have good reasons to believe that our leaders, especially Northern leaders, are playing games with Nigeria and they'll be worse desert when the chips are down. These political criminals, murderers and entities tell us that Boko Haram is on their own in the afternoon and deny the hand over weapons of mass destruction to them to continue to slaughter innocent Nigerians. They grin from ear to ear any time President Jonathan visits the North as if they're his friend, but under the cover of darkness, they stab President Jonathan on the back. They deny anti-Jonathan plots in the morning, and under the cover of darkness, they swear that President Jonathan should die. These political non-entities should... These political non-entities do not worry about the economy of the North. They do not worry about the obvious and self-evident truth and that the North is now desolate, a land that divorces its inhabitants, land soaked with blood of innocent children, wives, and breadwinners. The land similar to Thomas Hubbard's state of nature, where life is nasty, brutish, and short. Land where children are leading the elders. Land of mass murderers, land of fools, and land of shame. A school of thought tells me that a foolish constituency and the hub and the hobgoblin of small minds. War does not recognize any face. It does not know anybody. And it does not respect any face. War situation is like throwing bombs at the marketplace. Your brother or sister may be there. Those who are encouraging Boko Haram under the cover of darkness may be the victims of the fullness of time. George Orwell teaches us that the political language from conservatives to anarchists is designed to make lies sound truthful, to make murder respectable, and to give an appearance of solidity to pure wind. I repeat again that Boko Haram came on board because good luck Jonathan was elected the president of Nigeria. If General Buhari had won the election, the murderers would not have raised even a finger. Remember President Obasanjo and the Shara politics. Oh my God, please tell me these people that understand this game very well, even more than them. One more thing. I hear that Boko Haram is targeting our own Professor Wally Shoenka for elimination. May Allah help Boko Haram to achieve this and what will happen in Nigeria will shake the world. I want Boko Haram to remember that two gunshots were fired in Sarajevo by a schoolboy, grave of Princip 19, which killed Akduk Ferdinand and his wife, Akdoshe Sophie, on June 28, 1914. And when the enmity between Austria-Hungary and Serbia escalated into World War I, out of 65 million young men who were sent out to the battlefield, some 9, of 9 million never returned. When civilian casualties included, a total of 21 million persons were killed. Some still talk about the outbreak of that war in August 1914, at a time when the world went mad. The two gunshots from that schoolboy has set the whole world on fire and ushered in a period of violence, confusion, and the disillusionment that has continued in Yugoslavia to this day. Historians teach us that actions carry consequences. What a very beautiful piece. I never read this piece about Joe Bukwil. It's like I'll go digging. Huh. But can he come out and say this or defend this again? Huh? Let's see what he says when he says this piece out. All right, on this note, we have come to the end of a news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen. Until I come here next time, enjoy the rest of your day.